Hello everyone, it is I, the Witch of Paint. Today we won't be painting as much since I have some art supplies that I would like to test out. Starting with the Rodia 100% Pure Cotton Watercolor Sketchbook. I got this in a small size because one, I like small sketchbooks and two, it was less expensive than the big one, obviously. But I am pretty excited to try it out as this is pretty much the first 100% cotton paper that I've ever used. I did take the cold pressed sketchbook. They also have these in hot pressed, just in case you are wondering. I'm just very used to cold pressed, so I thought it would be best to just use that to try things out. Perhaps I will try the hot press one day. Second thing I have are some more watercolour postcards, but this time they are in a new size, so that definitely justifies that I bought more watercolour postcards. They are made of 100% cellulose, if you know postcards made of cotton, you know, tell me in the comments. Then I received the Dervant Tinted Charcoal Paint Set for Christmas. I just thought that the colours looked nice and it was a little bit different than your usual watercolour palette, so I thought why not try it out, you know. And second to last, I also got some Winsor Newton designer gouache last year. If you're wondering why I shook the box with the gouache paints, it's because it sounded like something was moving around in there and I was worried that the tubes were lying in there loosely. And then for the purpose, of a specific experiment, later on in this video, I have some paper from Hannemüller that is supposed to help paints be light fast, or something like that. The first thing I unpacked is the Dervent Tinted Charcoal Paint Set, which is made of plastic. It comes with a travel brush that has a container for water attached to it, and a sponge, as well as 12 colours, and a swatch card, which for some reason is on a paper that is partially see-through, not entirely sure why they would do such a thing, it completely defeats the point of swatches if you ask me. So anyways, we will be making our own swatch with paper that I use for my paintings almost all the time. I was about to measure out the size of the palette when I realised that the swatch that came with the palette fits into the palette quite neatly, so <laughs> I just used the swatch card that came with the palette to get a good size that will fit into the palette. The rest I measured myself, drawing 2cm by 2cm squares for the colours and 5mm underneath each row for the paint names. Speaking of the names, I really like most of these and they mostly fit the colours very well. We have dark moss, forest, pine, driftwood, mountain blue, ocean deep, thistle, glowing embers, burnt embers, burnt earth and then natural dark and white. Sad but with the last three, they decided to just stop being creative and just give them the most obvious names ever. I couldn't find numbers or pigment details on the packaging and trying to get the pans out of the palette was a little bit difficult, so I couldn't see if there was anything written on those either. Overall, though, I do like the colours. They are nice and muted, although in my opinion Burnt Earth and Burnt Embers are both too similar, really for my liking. Could have just mixed one of them a little bit differently, maybe. Some of the colours seem to dry rather opaquely, especially the white, which I did notice when I tried it out in a painting, but we're not doing that this video. And as I'm swatching, I do have the swatch card that it came with lying underneath the swatches that I'm making so that you guys can see the difference between the swatch card that it came with and the swatch card that I made. The swatch card that it came with showed the colours more as bluish, purplish, grey, black, kinda, very monotone colours. Whereas on my swatch card, however, we've got greens and reds and purples and white. Well, white is hard to get wrong, but you know what I mean, right? Another thing that I noticed while I was just swatching the colours was that the colours in the palette also dried extremely quickly. So after I wet each colour and lifted off the brush and went to my swatch card, the colour in the pans just completely dried immediately. So the paint doesn't stay activated for a long time like with other paints that I've used. I would seriously like to know what is in these paints, at the very least, you know, the pigments, but on the package there is no information on pigments or anything like that, so I'm in the dark here. Other than that though, I really like the way that these paints look. I like the colours, even if with tinted charcoal that name kind of made me think of monotone. But tinted kind of gives away that it doesn't 
include just monotone color so that's on me that's just my expectations i really like the way these look well either way it's time to move on to the gouache swatches i decided to split it into two because the palette i was going to put them in to was rather small oh yes the palette. This was something I did receive a long time ago, but I didn't feel like putting my cheap gouache paints into that. Now though, I have high quality gouache, so I can feel free to put it into this palette. Yay! The colour names for these colours are definitely not going to be as creative as ones of the different paints, because they are standard colours. We have primary yellow, permanent yellow deep, spectrum red, okay that's a little bit creative, primary red, primary blue, ultramarine, permanent green middle, yellow ochre, ivory black and zinc white. Each of the tubes does have information about opaqueness, permanence and pigment information, unlike the dead end paints. Most of the tubes have a permanence rating A, so are considered to be permanent, so don't just fade so much in the light, supposedly. Two of the tubes, the black and the yellow ochre, have the permanence rating AA, which means they are supposed to be extremely permanent, which is something that I should have checked before I started my light fast test, but I didn't, and so I didn't put either of those colours in my light fast test in the end, because I didn't check the tubes beforehand. The box does come with a neat little booklet outlining some things you have to know, like what the symbols on the tubes mean, colour theory, and a list of all the colours that Winsor Newton offers as gouache paints. I think this is really handy. I myself may or may not use it, you know, if I ever feel like, you know, buying more gouache paints or trying out different colours that might suit me more. Either way, First impression of the paints was that they were really, really bright. Uh, opaque too, of course. I had drawn a thick black line on the swatch card and even diluted they are quite opaque. At least that is the impression I'm getting from them. As I was filling these paints up, you may notice that some of the paints are more gloopy or firm than others. That is normal with literally any paints that I've opened and squeezed out. <laughs> It's why I decided to just take a toothpick and stir these paints until they're all smooth and kind of less gloopy and thick. Of course I wiped the toothpick after every paint, though not after trying to get most of the paint off onto my brush for the swatches. Still, my paint water was very quickly getting more and more dirty as I was going along with these swatches, and sometimes I forgot to then clean the brush off in my second water glass with the mostly clean water before diluting the gouache paints on the swatch card. I'm just not really used to paint water getting dirty so quickly. Now, may I mention I don't use gouache paints as often, so I don't exactly have a feeling for what consistency is good to paint with, but for the swatch that doesn't really matter, it matters more when I try to paint something with the gouache paints, you know? But that's for next video, I will talk more about my issues with the paints there. I also decided to put the Royal Talents gouache paints I have into the same palette because there was still some space left and otherwise I would hardly use them. I simply I simply don't like opening a tube every time I want to use a paint, so having them in a palette ready to use may help me, you know, paint with them more often. At least I hope so. We will have to see what I gravitate towards in future videos. I know that there is an empty space in the palette still, that's simply because I don't have 16 gouache paints, I have 15. At least 15 that are good. Maybe one of these days I will fill it with a colour if I find one that will suit my painting needs with gouache. But maybe I will not and it will just remain empty forever. I do have some cheaper gouache paints lying around but I don't, as I said, I don't want to put them into this palette because they're not really great gouache paints and so, you know, I'll probably use them up some other way, maybe. I mean, they do have to be used up eventually, don't they? Overall, I think the colours are nice, there is a good variety, but one, they're incredibly bright to work with, which is just something that I'm going to have to work around somehow. I will probably get used to that eventually, but the second thing that I do have issues with that it does become apparent when I try these out next video is that I am missing a brown tone like a burnt sienna or something like that. I would have just liked that in there 
personally because I like drawing nature stuff and stuff with trees so having to mix a brown colour every time I want to draw a tree is kind of annoying for me. But that's just a little nitpick. Overall the colours are pretty good, I would say. Very opaque, very nice and colourful and stuff. There's no issue there, it's just the brightness and the lack of brown. So for the light fast test that I'm going to be doing, I am using a block of Hannah Muller paper that my mum bought a good while ago. It is for watercolours specifically, 300 grams per meter squared, supposedly age resistant, hence why my mum suggested that I use it for these light fast tests. Before we talk about what I'm doing though, let me explain what these light fast tests are for. A lot of colours, particularly cheaper ones, will begin to fade over time. This can happen over months, sometimes years, but it is nice to know firsthand through these tests how the paints you own behave. So for this there will be two sets of swatches, one that will be exposed to sunlight and one that will be stuck in a dark drawer. And in a couple of months we will check on them just to see how they're doing. Because I have a small envelope for the dark swatches with ones that are going to be left in the dark, I had to cut down the paper to A5 as well just to make sure that it's going to fit in the end. Also before we get to that I have a complaint on the Mueller. Why did you make this paper block a ring bound and then didn't perforate the pages? <laughs> like, I had to rip it out the way I used to ha have to rip out some of the paper for school back in Germany, which was not pleasant and I still dislike ripping paper from these sort of ring binders. It just doesn't look nice, even after cutting off the paper from one side. It's just... Ugh. And it also resulted in it no longer being exactly A3, which kind of sucks, but okay, let's not complain too much about it, I guess. It just hurts my soul a little bit, Hannah Müller. Anyway, after cutting the paper down to somewhat A5, but not quite anymore, apparently, I divided the page into 12 somewhat even areas. This gave me room for six swatches per palette I wanted to figure out the light fastness of. I started with the De Devend paints, picking the colours Dark Moss, Mountain Blue, Thistle, Glowing Embers, Burnt Earth and Dark for the test. For all the swatches I will be going from very dark on top to very light on the bottom of the swatch field. Next came the Winsor Newton Sketches palette, of which I picked the colours Lemon Yellow Hue, Cadmium Red Pale Hue, Alizarin Crimson Hue, Ultramarine, Sap Green and Burnt Sienna for the swatches. For the Van Gogh paints, I decided to take the same-ish colours of the Winston Newton watercolours. So I went with Permanent Lemon Yellow, Permanent Red Light, Carmine Ultramarine Deep, Sap Green and Burnt Sienna. I just thought it would be interesting to try and compare the same-ish colours with each other, considering that they are both student quality paints, so they should perhaps maybe yield similar results, even if they're from different brands. The last light fast swatch I did was of the Winsor Newton designer gouache. Three of these just with a pure paint, the other three were the same colours mixed with a zinc white. The three colours I picked were primary yellow, spectrum red and ultramarine. Now that I have checked the permanence label on the tubes I should have perhaps tried to make the last colour ivory black instead of ultramarine but maybe I'll do that another time. As I said, on the other side I mixed all of the colours with zinc white just to see if that makes a difference or not. Then I cut them all out and in half before putting half into the envelope which is going to go into a drawer so that it stays in the dark. And the other half will be first put down on my windowsill until I have purchased a frame to put these swatches into which I haven't done that yet. But they are in their respective spots now, so I would say that we check on them again in about half a year or so and then see how they look. If there's been fading, they probably will have been fading by that point, but it doesn't hurt to check, you know? As I have mentioned throughout this video, the testing out of the sketchbook and the postcard will come in another video, maybe even videos, depending on how long they're going to take. Otherwise, this would end up being just a tad bit too long. So, see this as a part one of me trying out my new art supplies. Next time, I will paint some fun things for you all. If you enjoyed watching this video, even if it was just a whole bunch of swatching, Please like it and if you haven't yet done so, subscribe to my channel. I am planning to make a lot more videos that involve actual painting and perhaps more myths and history stuff that I stumble across like I did in last week's video about Dunagur Castle. Feel free to check out my Twitch channel down below as well and look at my Instagram too if you'd like to. 
even if I sh should really get more active on there again. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video for the time being. I am the Witch of Paint and I shall see you all next Sunday. Bye! Ah, look! Who's made it to the end of this video? Well done to you! I bet you're here for the outtakes, so go ahead, have fun. Some of the colours seem to be rather opaque after I was swatched. I had. <laughs> after I had swatched them. Let's try that. On the package, there is no information on pigment. Pigments! The consistency. Consistent. For the Van Gogh paints, I tried to match them to the same ish colours of the Winston Newton watercolours, so I went with permanent. 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 As I said, on the other side, I mixed all the colours with. Oh, tiredness.